This week, a crypto flaw in Yubico security keys. Facebook's lawyers say you have no right to privacy. Two cloud services, PCM and Attunity, have breaches. And two Florida cities pay over $1 million in ransomware attacks in less than a week. Jason Wood joins us for expert commentary on Trump officials weighing a crackdown on end-to-end -end encryption. All that and more on this episode of Hack Naked News. This is Security Weekly, for security professionals, by security professionals. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show that brings you the security news each week. And despite popular belief, we do wear pants. It's Hack Naked News. Let the team at Black Hills Information Security test your defenses. With over 10 years of experience in penetration testing, red teaming, and threat hunting, the testers at Black Hills will help you find the holes in your security before the bad guys do. The team at Black Hills cares about educating and sharing their knowledge by creating countless blogs, open source tools, and webcasts for you to learn more about the tradecraft of pen testing and red teaming. Visit securityweekly.com forward slash BHIS to join their mailing list and view the latest blogs and webcasts from Black Hills Information Security. Welcome everyone to Hack Naked News. This is episode number 225 for July 2nd, 2019. I am your host, Matt Alderman, sitting in for Paul Asadorian. Security Weekly is returning to Vegas this August for Black Hat and DEF CON. If you'd like to request a briefing or sponsor an interview on site at Black Hat, please go to securityweekly.com forward slash booking and submit your requests. We are filling up pretty quickly. We have a lot of interest this year. Some of you have told us that you are overwhelmed by the amount of content we distribute. In an attempt to make it a little easier for you to find what you're interested in, we've created our new listener interest list. Sign up for the list and select your interest by visiting securityweekly.com forward slash subscribe and click the button to join the list. And now the security news for this week. Yubico security keys with a crypto flaw. Yubico is recalling a line of security keys used by the U.S. government due to a firmware flaw. The YubiKey FIP series devices with firmware versions 4.42 and 4.4.4 have a reduced randomness of the cryptographic keys it generates. Security keys with the ECDSA signatures are in particular danger since 80 bits of the 256 bits that generate the key remain static. The security keys and questions are used by thousands of federal employees on a daily basis, letting them securely log on to their devices by using one-time passwords. Vulnerability and Medtronic insulin pumps allow hacking devices. Medtronic and the US government have warned that some Medtronic mini med insulin pumps are vulnerable to cyber attacks. The flaw known as CVE 2019-10964 is an improper access control issue that could be exploited by an attacker to inject, replay, modify, and or intercept data by having adjacent access to one of the vulnerable insulin pumps to interfere with the wireless RF radio frequency communications to or from the product. According to the FDA, Medtronic has identified 4,000 patients who are potentially using insulin pumps affected by the flaw. The fix is to provide an alternative pump, which is more secure, to their patients. New exploit for Microsoft Excel Power Query. Proof of concept, which allows remote code execution, is the latest to exploit dynamic data exchange and is another reminder why organizations must ensure office settings are secure. Researchers at Mimecast have developed a working proof of concept that shows how attackers can use a legitimate function in Microsoft Excel called Power Query, which is a feature that lets users connect their spreadsheets with other structured and unstructured data sources to remotely drop and run malware on a user's system to escalate privileges and other malicious activity. For an attack to work, a threat actor would need to send a crafted Excel file to the victim via phishing email or use some other social engineering tactic to get that person to open the document. At that point, the document would make a query or request 
for the malicious payload hosted on the web server. You have no right to privacy. Mark Zuckerberg declares that privacy is a core and fundamental part of Facebook's vision. But we are now discovering that its lawyers state that Facebook users have no right to privacy. Representing Facebook before U.S. District Judge Vince Chabria was Orrin Snyder of Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher, who claimed the plaintiff's charges of privacy invasion were invalid because Facebook users have no expectation of privacy on Facebook. The simple act of using Facebook, Snyder claimed, negated any user's expectation of privacy. Now you know why I don't use Facebook. In a related story, Italy finds Facebook over the Cambridge Analytica case. Italy's data protection watchdog slammed Facebook with a fine of 1 million euros for violating privacy, law, privacy laws over the Cambridge Analytica scandal. Facebook's controversies will continue. Senate report shows decade-long failure of government agencies to protect personal data. And it looks like Facebook is not alone. A new report from the U.S. Senate's Committee on Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs has revealed the decade-long failure of several important federal agencies to secure their systems and protect sensitive and personal information. According to the report, the Department of State, the Department of Transportation, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Health and Human Services, the Department of Education, and the Social Security Administration all failed to ensure adequate protection for personal information. According to Rob Portman, Chairman of the Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations, after a decade of negligence, our federal agencies have failed at implementing basic cybersecurity practices, leaving classified, personal, and sensitive information unsafe and vulnerable to theft. The federal government can and must do a better job of shoring up our defenses against the rising cybersecurity threats. Cloud computing giant PCM hacked. A hacking group has gained access to the internal infrastructure of large cloud services provider PCM. Discovered in mid-May, the attacker stole administrative credentials for Office 365 accounts. After compromising a system, the group would use a custom version of Mimikatz to collect usernames and passwords from memory for organizations dealing in gift cards. That information would be used for money transfer services, payment processing services, and clearing houses to conduct gift card fraud. According to PCM, no consumer's personal information was accessed or acquired by any unauthorized party, and the impact of its systems was limited, and the matter has been remediated. A Tunity data leak, Netflix, Ford, TD Bank data exposed by open AWS buckets. A Tunity data integration and big data management firm, now owned by Click, exposed a significant amount of sensitive data through unprotected Amazon S3 buckets. The data leak was discovered on May 13th by UpGuard. According to UpGuard, the total size is uncertain, but the researcher downloaded a sample of about a terabyte in size, including 750 gigabytes of compressed email backups. This cause, a misconfiguration in Amazon S3, is not a new problem, but one that AWS has added more visibility into. Yet another reason to manage your configurations, especially in the cloud. 1.1 million in two weeks. Florida cities pay out big to ransomware gangs. Less than a week after the city of Rivera Beach, 80 miles from Miami, unanimously, unanimously voted to pay $600,000 worth of Bitcoin to an extortionist who had locked their IT systems with ran ransomware. Lake City has come to the same decision. The small uh, northern Florida city will pay $460,000 worth of Bitcoin to hackers in order to regain control of its email systems and servers. Fortunately, insurance is expected to pay all but about $10,000 of the ransom. With recent ransomware payouts, all cities and, all cities 
and municipalities need to be prepared to defend against these attacks, including secure offsite backups of their systems and data. We'll take a short break, then get our expert commentary for the week from Jason Wood. The question is simple. Have any of the systems on my network been compromised? The answer is harder than it should be. Enter AI Hunter. Active Countermeasures has automated and streamlined techniques used by the best pen testers and threat hunters in the industry to create AI Hunter, a network threat hunting solution that does the first pass of a hunt for you to identify systems that are most likely to be compromised and scores the results on a scale from zero to 100. You can then research those systems in depth with AI Hunter. Focus your valuable time on the systems that need your expertise with AI Hunter. Sign up for a personal demo today at securityweekly.com forward slash ACM. We welcome Jason Wood as he joins us today for expert commentary on Trump officials weighing a crackdown on end-to-end encryption. Welcome, Jason. Howdy, everybody. It's good to be back with you. Um, as y'all know, I ha- we- we've talked, and Paul Allen and I have talked a number of times about the push around encryption from law enforcement for various countries around the world. Uh, I Just as a brief update, I guess, I mean, like last year we were talking about Australians encryption bill that was finally signed into law in early December 2018. And uh, basically this law enables Australian police to force technology companies to create some kind of master key or mechanism uh, to get into uh, uh, encrypted communications and decrypt them without the knowledge of anybody else, uh, the, the, the affected users. Uh, now, there were a lot of concerns about the weakening of encryption for that. And so there was a safeguard, in quotes, written into the law that would prevent the change in the encryption method being made if it would create a systemic weakness, again, in quotes, to the encryption. However, that's not been defined. So who knows what that means? Now it seems like it, this is starting to heat up here inside of the United States with, again, uh, a push to make uh, encryption easier to break for organizations or agencies such as law enforcement. According to Politico, uh, I read the, an article there the, and uh, some other articles that Trump officials met actually last win- week on Wednesday to discuss how to go about requesting legislation that prevents uh, tech companies from using encryption that law enforcement cannot break into. The debate was, apparently in this meeting, was focused about whether or not to give a a statement of their position on end-to-end encryption or whether to actually go ahead and seek this legislation from Congress. Now, as you know, here in the United States, this has also been a heated issue. Uh, former FBI Director James Comey uh, had pushed quite a number of times for some kind of mechanism to give law enforcement access to encrypted data, uh, basically saying that there's just some way out there that this got it, it has to be able to be to happen without weakening encryption. According to Politico, the current debate is largely between the normal parties, Department of Justice and the FBI on one side and other departments like Commerce and the State Departments on the other. The DOJ and the FBI feel that encryption, strong encryption is a big enough threat that weakening encryption and enabling essentially electronic crime due to weakened encryption is worth the benefit of being able to capture criminals and terrorists. Commerce and State Departments are definitely not on board with this idea. They cite economic concerns, security concerns, and consequences to diplomatic efforts. Interestingly enough, the Department of Homeland Security is torn on this particular uh, decision. You've got the split happening between the cybersecurity and infrastructure security agencies within DHS, and again, law enforcement on the other side with Customs Enforcement and the Secret Service complaining about the number of times that they have run into encryption stopping or slowing down their their investigations. Again, it's the same idea. Uh, law enforcement is willing to accept the risks of an increase in crime due to weakened encryption as long as they can you know, have some enabling to go and catch criminals and make their investigations uh, run a bit smoother. 
Now, previous attempts to do legislation have been squashed inside of Congress back in the Sam, when the uh, San Bernardino mass shootings occurred and there was the lawsuit occurring between the FBI and Apple and the FBI eventually found a third party that had a, a basically a, a exploit to allow them to decrypt the phones. Uh, a couple of, of legislators in the United States attempted to create legislation that would require this to happen. However, it was quickly uh, subjected to a strong backlash and ended up being shot down. Uh, in this case, this appears to be, at this point, it doesn't appear that Congress has a particular appetite for this. And there's actually, in a rare occurrence for the United States, uh, some strong bipartisan opposition to the idea of this legislation. So. Regardless of all of this, it looks like the Trump administration is looking to push harder on this this issue and and start to try and get some movement on it. Now, I've been fairly open in the past with my opinion on encryption and the idea of weakening encryption with some kind of uh, mechanism that allows law enforcement to to unlock any encryption. Obviously, there are problems with law enforcement investigations, with data being encrypted, and that's, that's definitely going to be a concern. At the same time, I don't have any confidence in, uh, in creating an encryption mechanism where we've got some kind of master key or keys to unlock communications out there. And there have been various mechanisms proposed for that, where you know, sometimes the government will have the keys, sometimes the governments know we'll let the, the technology companies have the keys. And they can unlock it when we make a demand for evidence. Key management is is already the difficult part of effective encryption. And so creating these keys and having them out there, I think will immediately become a target for attackers. Not only that, uh, but we have ample evidence in the news of people just making mistakes. And so you can see these keys being exposed somehow, or at least put behind weakened security mechanisms and potentially misused. You know, we already have a history here in the United States, as well as a lot of other countries in the world, of collecting massive amounts of information about the citizens of their countries by uh, government agencies. And while I don't necessarily think their intentions are uh, malicious for the most part, uh, I do believe that this kind of access will increase temptations for abuse and definitely experience submission creep. Regardless, uh, part of me feels that the days of strong encryption being available for the general population may be limited. Uh, the agencies and individuals who want the ability to unlock all encryption have not changed their mind. They're continuing to push uh, for it. And so they, they, they're staying consistent and persisting in spite of setbacks along the way. So I think with time and effort, they will be able to eventually chip away at these protections to get them th get it down to a level that they find to be acceptable. Obviously, to prevent this, uh, if you're concerned about this, individuals, companies, government agencies need to be just as consistent on defense. It's definitely an area where we have some give and take. This is a serious, you know, question for society because while I don't like the idea of letting criminals get away with things, neither do I like the idea of having encryption keys being able to unlock anything or requiring weak encryption mechanisms so that governments can break them. So keep your eyes on the news. I expect we're going to see more and more of this inside of the United States. We've had the push in Australia, and it looks like maybe it's going to be our turn here inside the United States of America. So keep an eye out. Jason, We what, what's the... Really interesting is we had two kind of related stories this week in the news, and, and we'll see more, right? Who needs government regulation if we're implementing weak encryption, like the 80-bit issue with, with Ubico? Um, yep. And we know that the government already can't protect government data using encryption. So, you know, I'm not sure that, you know, regulations to weaken encryption are, are necessarily a good thing, knowing the, the types of attacks and events we've seen out there over time. But it's a very interesting topic. Always love your insight on Hack Naked News and, and, and thanks for bringing it forward today. Thanks, Hal. Good times. Always. Well, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week on Hack Naked News.